the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. My name is Monsignor Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Angelo, Gabriella, and Miranda from Toronto, Ontario. This Mass is offered in loving memory of their mother, Maria Nina. May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Jerusalem.
he declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless is not a sharing in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break is it not a sharing in the body of Christ. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one bread. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. This Sunday, the Universal Church celebrates the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, a feast first proposed by St. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century. Some two months ago, the Church celebrated the institution of the Eucharist on Holy Thursday, and this Sunday we're invited to reflect once again on the mystery of the greatest sacrament of our encounter with our Lord. What the Church teaches us is the source and the summit of Christian life. Today's Gospel reminds us the Eucharist is the bread of life, the living bread that has come down from heaven. Here our Lord states clearly, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. So it is that the Eucharist has been called the bread of angels, the manna from heaven. St. Cyril of Alexandria comments that just as God gave the Israelites manna from heaven on their journey to the Promised Land, so he now abundantly supplies spiritual food for us again to give us strength on our spiritual journey through the deserts of this passing world. The Church documents remind us that the Church draws her life from the Eucharist, Indeed, St. Ignatius of Antioch calls the Eucharist the medicine of immortality and the antidote to death. Here the teachings of the Church remind us that the Eucharist is truly a glimpse of heaven appearing on earth. It has been called a glorious ray of the heavenly Jerusalem, which pierces the clouds of our history and lights up our journey. At the Last Supper, Jesus takes bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples. And whenever we celebrate the Eucharist, we recall our Lord's actions, the Last Supper, 
as we re receive then this bread of angels, this bread that is blessed, broken, and given for the life of the world. First of all, then, the Eucharist is the bread that is blessed. It is blessed bread. The Eucharist is holy, sacred. It contains really and substantially the mystery of Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity. As bread that is blessed, the Eucharist has power, the power to remind us that this passing world is not our true homeland. Again, here is the manna from heaven for our journey through the deserts of this world. Here is the food that nourishes us on our way home to heaven. Concerning the great spiritual power of this bread that is blessed, St. Maximilian Kolbe comments that the Mass, when celebrated well, can renew an entire diocese. Elsewhere, he states, one communion alone can make us saints, can affect the conversion of many people, but all depends on our interior dispositions, on our preparation. So the Eucharist is bread that is blessed, and we need to prepare for our encounter with the Lord in the sacrament. The saints also remind us of the importance of devotion to the Eucharist. Here, St. Alphonsus of Liguori says that of all devotions, that of adoring Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is the greatest after the sacraments, the one dearest to God and the one most helpful to us. St. Teresa of Calcutta expresses the wish that people would devote some time to Eucharistic adoration. She once said that when people ask me, what will convert people? What will save the world? My answer, she said, is prayer. We need for every parish to come before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament in holy hours of prayer. So I encourage all of you to spend some time with the Lord in adoration when you're able. The Eucharist is bread that is blessed. It is bread also that is broken. The breaking of the bread reminds us of the sacrificial character of the Eucharist. For Jesus suffered, he died for the life of the world. The sacrificial character of the Eucharist is made clear in the words of institution pronounced by Jesus and repeated by the priest during the Mass and the Eucharistic prayer. This is my body, which is given up for you. This is the cup of my blood, which is poured out for the life of the world. As bread that is broken, the Catechism reminds us that the Eucharist, the sacrifice of Christ, becomes the sacrifice of the whole Church, the members of the body of Christ when we unite ourselves to him through our prayers and through our praise, but also through our sufferings and through our sacrifices. In this way, our lives acquire a deep spiritual meaning as we unite ourselves spiritually to Christ. Finally, blessed, broken, the Eucharist is bread that is given for the life of the world. The Mass ends with a call to action, a call to go forth to love and to serve the Lord and one another. The Eucharist, can we say, has social consequences. It wants to find expression in the love of our neighbor, including the stranger, whom we're called to help in our journey through this world. So this church speaks of our call to satisfying not only the physical, but the spiritual hungers of the world. Here, St. John Chrysostom asks, do you wish to honor the body of Christ? Then do not disdain him when you see him in rags. What God wants is not golden chalices, but golden souls. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, we pray for the grace to be transformed through our encounters with the living Christ in the Eucharist. We pray for the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, that as she proclaims Luke's Gospel in, her, in, in Luke's Gospel, that her soul magnifies the Lord, say, so may our lives magnify the Lord in every way. For the church documents remind us of the profound analogy between Mary's yes to the Archangel Gabriel and the amen which every believer says when we receive the body of Christ. So we should remember all this, also at this Mass, the Marian dimension of our faith. And Mary, who says yes to Christ, shows us how to say yes to Christ. And this echoes when we say amen when we receive the Eucharist. Let us now pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking him to hear and answer the prayers of all who call upon his name. Let us pray for caregivers in our homes and care centers who tend to the needs of our frail elders. We pray to the Lord. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who may be facing significant transitions in their activities, health relationships, or finances, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of years granted in our time to so many men and women in the second half of life. We thank you for their presence in our community, for their life experience, for their courage, wisdom, and witness of faith. We ask your blessing upon them as they live the many transitions that are part of maturing years. Keep them in your care, grant them peace, and enable them to become beacons of hope in our world. We ask all this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessings to God forever. That's why I'm to the share in divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Yes, God. Receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering in his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. So with the angels, the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we, look, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the, sacrific the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.